So wanted to do a another, and this is fairly a fast video, I think, because uh, I've been using this Huawei 14S, the Matebook 14S now for probably just, you know, just over a month or so. And I wanted to show you guys uh, a little bit of how it performs in regards to video editing. And you can use this, you know, you can think about this in regards to the Huawei Matebook 14S, uh, or you can kind of just think about it in regards to, you know, Windows computers that are kind of running similar specs. So this is running the uh, 11th generation i7 uh, with the Iris uh, graphics. Uh, it's also running 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, so it is, I don't want to see the highest model, I think, but it's the, the model that you get here in Canada, right? Um, so we've done, we did, we've actually did some tests and I'll kind of just put the results up there because you don't necessarily need to see all the actual tests happening. And for me, these are three pieces of software that I could see a lot of us using nowadays. And this will range everything from everywhere from, uh, Insta360 Studio. So how how it uh, how the time is, I guess, in regards to exporting. So when you're exporting an actual 360 video uh, versus exporting uh, a flat video out of Insta360 Studio. So you know, taking that 5.7K and exporting it as an HD clip. Um, then we're actually going to run Catalyst Browse, and this one, this one is actually a good one. Uh, so Sony's Catalyst Browse, and of course, this is a piece of software that I use to stabilize uh, Sony camera footage. So kind of any Sony camera that has gyro data in it. So I actually use it with my ZV-1 as well as my ZV-E10. Um, and just realize, for these clips, the Insta360 clip that we use as a as a sample just to test, and we, again we test the same clip on all three machines, and I'll talk about the three machines. Um, we we test exactly one minute 360 clip. We test exactly one minute of uh, ZV, ZV1 footage, and that's uh, at full wide, no stabilization put on it because you can't have any stabilization to use Catalyst Browse. Uh, then we take actually the flat footage from Insta360, we take the 360 footage from Insta360 Studio, we take the video file from Catalyst Browse, uh, we bring it into DaVinci Resolve, because again, we wanted for this a piece of software that would be across the board. Um, so we do an import test with those three files just to see how long they take. We do a stabilization test of the Sony footage just to see how long it would take. And then we do an export test to see how long that would take. So a few things that we kind of learned along the way, um, but hopefully, hopefully this will give you an idea, maybe you know how this machine performs, which I actually thought performed very well, and um, maybe it'll give you an idea if it's a good enough machine for you if you're looking at a Windows computer for actual video editing. All right, so the very the very first one that we kind of look at here is Insta360 Studio. Um, and again, we took a um, one minute clip, and this is one minute clip taken from uh, a Insta360 ONE X2 camera. And one minute, and we ran it through three machines. So this is the three machine test. So of course we have the Huawei 14S i7 with 16 gigs, gigs of RAM. We also ran it through uh, a Lenovo uh, i5. Again, both of those machines, both of those Windows computers um, running the Irish chipset on it, um, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, oh yeah, the, the Lenovo was the ThinkBook, I think it is Think, ThinkBook 14. Uh, and then last but not least, we run it through a MacBook Pro M1 with 16 gigs of RAM. And my thought was, you know, in all of these, that the MacBook, because it's it's got a lot of like MPEG encoders and things like that built into it. It's also the most expensive out of the lot that it would probably be the uh, fastest. And for the most part, it was, except except for one, which is the one that I was, um, I'm, I'm kind of really glad that this is faster because that is one that I use a lot. We'll talk about that as we get to it. Anyway, Insta360 Studio taking in one minute of footage 
and exporting it as a 360 stabilized clip. Uh, again, you're kind of, and this is kind of, kind of runs through the whole thing. And the um, numbers that you're seeing here, of course, the lower is the better, lower the better. Uh, these are all in seconds. So, you know, if it's 200 seconds, that's actually, you know, three minutes and 20 seconds. Um, but you are seeing in here, again, this is pretty much standard throughout the whole thing. One minute clip giving you uh, these kind of results here. And you'll see that the i7 Huawei sits, sits in the middle, right? And you guys, again, if this is something that you're doing a lot of, you may be able to look at all these and be like, oh yeah, no, that's that's fine, that's all right. Or if you want to spend more money, maybe you want faster, maybe if you want to spend less money, you, you can go the other route as well. So this is the numbers for the 360 export. We also have some numbers here for uh, the taking that Insta360 footage and exporting it as a flat so that you actually get uh, just that 1920 by 1080 footage. And again, you know what, the numbers here, they're, they're pretty consistent throughout the whole, all the tests that we do in regards to speed, right? You know, you're looking at that, that i5 is giving you or takes the longest without question. Uh, and then we're getting to the i7, which kind of shoots in the middle. And then we get to the MacBook M1, which again is uh, the fastest, but again, paying the most, most money for it, right? So you're spending probably four or $500 more for that machine. Um, so uh, in regards to Insta360, you know what, it, it, it works on all of them. The Huawei actually did really good. You know what, if I was using this computer for exporting, I, I'd be pleased with it, right? Nice thing about Insta360 is you can queue up a whole bunch of footage and just kind of let it go. So if one takes a little bit longer than the other, is it a big deal? Not really, you guys can kind of figure out and do something else while the computer's doing that. Next bit of footage that we test, or next piece of software, was the one that I was most curious about. And this is actually Catalyst Browse. So this is Sony's Catalyst Browse, and it, again, works with Sony cameras that have gyro data inside it. So we tested it, again, with a one-minute clip from a ZV-1. Um, and in this aspect, the Huawei i7 was the fastest. It was the fastest out of the lot. And I sort of sort of expected it because the the catalyst browse software is not apple silicon uh enabled it is running through rosetta which means it's emulating which means of course it's 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 slower right so the actual i5 and the m1 were close and this is again a, a minute long clip right the i7 the fastest 100 percent, and for me someone who has all three of these machines, um, I will, at this point in time, uh, really be utilizing um, this computer, the Huawei i7, for anything that has to do with Catalyst Browse. 100% it's gonna be the machine because anytime I can save any time doing that, I can continue working other and somewhere else and just let this export and, you know, process all those files, export to an external hard drive, and then move that drive over to what other computer and be done with it. But um, just so you guys know, like a five minute clip when I'm running on, let's say my, let's say my MacBook can take 50 minutes to an hour to actually go through and render those out, right? To do all the processing of those. So if I can save 20%, 30%, you know, that takes that hour and can bring it down to about 40 minutes. And that's only one clip, right? If I'm doing four or five clips, I've had days where I literally am just sitting there and, and waiting for these clips to render because you can only do one at a time. So you just kind of sit there and wait and wait and wait. So t if I can save, like I said, 20 minutes on a, on a render out, huge win, that's a huge win. So this, for me, the Huawei, without question, is gonna be used as my uh, Sony Catalyst browse software because as you can see, it's the fastest, it processed the fastest, and I really don't see Sony uh, putting in much effort or much work trying to make Catalyst Browse uh, a nice you know, universal app or an Apple Silicon based app so that it, it can get some more speed. I just, I just don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, the last, last piece of software that we test was um, DaVinci Resolve. And again, we're seeing that, you know, i5 slowest, i7, M1. 
and I will probably give the benefit of the doubt to the M1, like some of that benefit, not only because of its processor, but because its hard drive is so fast, right? Um, and the, the Huawei and the Lenovo's hard drive speeds, very similar to each other, right? So um, we're seeing that, that increase in performance between those two really being graphics card and CPU based. Um, whereas when you get to the M1, like that hard drive, it's like six to 10 times as fast. So you're gonna see a lot of uh, speed boost when you do that. So importing, again, those three clips into DaVinci Resolve, uh, all of them are fast. The i5, surprisingly, I, I wasn't quite sure why it took as long as it did, but not unreasonable. You know what, it imports, it was fine. Uh, i7 was good, M1, what can you say? Um, and then we took all three of those clips, uh, had them in a timeline, but did the stabilization feature inside DaVinci on all those. Uh, again, the i5, sluggish. Uh, then you get a nice, a nice speed improvement when you go to the Huawei. And again, you get a nice speed improvement when you go to the M1. Now, of course, uh, DaVinci Resolve is Apple Silicon uh, native, so it uses it in its full power. Um, but the i7 did its job the huawei i'd be oh, i'd be okay with it very very much so uh and then last was export speed so we exported all three of those into a standard h264 uh, onto the desktop of each machine and again you're going to see that speed and, and this again is a combination of how fast the processor and graphics card works as well as how fast the hard drive can actually write the files so Seeing that the M1 has such a fast hard drive, that definitely helps uh, in its performance numbers. But the Huawei, fine. You know, I had, would have no issues working with it. Now, when you're actually in DaVinci Resolve, the i5 uh, with like 4K footage and like the 360 footage um, was a little on the choppy side for doing playback in full. So you'd really have to make sure that you optimize the footage or played back in like half resolution or anything like that. Um, the Huawei though, actually, the only issue it had from what I was doing was when you started playing. It's like it had to take a minute to kind of get everything into the hard drive or into the RAM's buffer so that it could start to play because it would kind of stutter a little bit for the first three or four seconds, and then it, then it smoothed right out again. So the i7 definitely would be something that I would look at over the i5 if you're working with 4K footage a lot or higher, like 360 footage and things like that. Of course, the M1 was just, it was butter. It was smooth, smooth as could be, uh, again, to be expected. But you know what? I, you know, we throw, we throw, or I throw that M1 into here just so you guys get an idea of, of that machine because it's it's out there. It may be something that you want to go with. But those of us that are looking at a Windows computer, there's, there's so many other advantages, of course, that this machine here has, let's say, over the i5 and has over um, the MacBook. Uh, and that is just acceptance and software availability, et cetera, et cetera. For example, uh, I'm heading off on a uh, business trip, I guess. Uh, I'll be sitting in an airport, sitting, sitting on a plane for X amount of hours, et cetera, et cetera. I'm actually going to bring the Huawei with me versus the other machines. Two reasons. Uh, I can do a lot of work in the airport. Um, I have software that is, it just runs better on the Windows platform. It was designed for the Windows platform. It runs better. And gaming. Yeah, so... Not that this is a video about gaming, but you know what, if you want to be able to play, not necessarily the highest end games, but some games, um, this can do it. So you know what, this, this is the machine that's gonna be going with me, with me on, my, on my little trek uh, tomorrow. It's a really great laptop. It's, it's a business laptop, but as you guys can see here, it can process Insta360, it can work with Sony Catalyst Browse, it can use DaVinci Resolve, you can game, and of course, because it's Windows, you can do all the business stuff that you need it to do. All right guys, if you had a choice out of these three machines, which which one would you get? Leave a, leave a comment down below, let me know which one and which computer you're using right now. All right guys, I'm gonna leave you there. Uh, I gotta get ready for a flight tomorrow.
All right, my friends, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and uh, we'll see you guys in, uh, well, you, we'll see you tomorrow, but I'll see you in a couple days. Later.